Hi, my name is Ted O'Connell, and I'm the author of USMLE Step 2 Secrets. This is part three of the endocrinology chapter. Just a reminder to check out medicalschoolvideos.com for additional videos, and send us your thoughts and ideas at step2secrets at gmail.com. Let's get started. What is the difference between a primary and secondary endocrine disorder? In primary disorders, the problem is in the gland. The hypothalamic pituitary axis is functioning appropriately. In primary hypothyroidism, for example, the thyroid gland does not function properly for whatever reason, but the pituitary and hypothalamus respond appropriately. Therefore, thyroid hormone is low, as in all cases of hypothyroidism, but TSH and thyroid releasing hormone are high. The appropriate response from the pituitary and hypothalamus to low levels of thyroid hormone. In secondary disorders, the true dysfunction is outside the gland itself. For example, in secondary hypothyroidism, thyroid hormone is low, but TSH and or thyroid releasing hormone is also low, which is inappropriate in the setting of low thyroid hormone. If the pituitary is destroyed or surgically removed, secondary hypothyroidism results from low TSH. The thyroid gland functions well, but no TSH is available to stimulate it. To confuse the picture, the dysfunction also may be completely outside of the endocrine axis. For example, heart failure that causes secondary hyperaldosteronism. This concept in endocrine gland dysfunction is quite important. Simple blood tests can localize the problem. You may be able to answer USMLE questions simply by reading through the various values for hormones and hormone releasing factors and figuring out where in the hypothalamus pituitary target gland axis the problem lies. What are the symptoms and signs of primary hyperaldosteronism? What are the causes? Symptoms include weakness and edema. Signs include hypertension, hypokalemia, hypernatremia, and edema. Kahn syndrome is caused by an aldosterone-secreting adrenal neoplasm. Because it is a primary disease, the renin levels are low. The rest of the endocrine axis responds appropriately to gland dysfunction. Order a CT scan of the abdomen to look for an adrenal mass. The treatment is surgical removal of the tumor. What causes secondary hyperaldosteronism? Secondary hyperaldosteronism is much more common than primary disease. It occurs because of low perfusion of the kidney, as in a congestive heart, heart failure, renal artery stenosis, dehydration, nephrotic syndrome, and cirrhosis. The key mechanism is that the kidney senses hypoperfusion and secretes renin. Therefore, the renin level is high. Treatment of the underlying disorder, if possible, resolves the hyperaldosteronism. Potassium levels may be normal or even high. Of note, hyperkalemia may be the cause of increased aldosterone release, just as hypocalcemia causes increased release of PTH. Both are normal physiologic responses. Give the classic clinical description of a pheochromocytoma. How is it diagnosed? Look for wild swings in blood pressure, with some measurements being dangerously high. Tachycardia, postural hypotension, headaches, sweating, flushing, dizziness, mental status changes, and or a feeling of impending doom, such as a, like a panic attack. The screening test is a 24-hour urine collection for metanephrines, homovanillic acid, and or vanillomandelic acid which are catecholamine breakdown products that are abnormally elevated in the urine. If levels are high, order an abdominal CT scan to look for an adrenal mass. Surgical tumor removal is a treatment of choice after stabilization with alpha blockers and then beta blockers. Define diabetes insipidus. What are the two types? Diabetes insipidus is a lack of antidiuretic hormone or vasopressin effect in the body. Patients with diabetes insipidus secrete inappropriately dilute urine because of the lack of ADH effect, and they may urinate up to 25 liters of urine per day, resulting in dehydration and hypernatremia. Such patients die rapidly if they are unable to drink water. Normally, when the body is dehydrated, ADH causes urine to become highly concentrated through retention of free water. 
In diabetes insipidus, the urine remains dilute, even though the serum osmolarity is quite high as a result of dehydration. The two types are central and nephrogenic. What causes central diabetes insipidus? Central diabetes insipidus is caused by a lack of ADH production by the posterior pituitary gland. Although it is often idiopathic, look for trauma, neoplasm, or sarcoid or granulomatous disease as a cause. Order a CT or MRI scan of the head if indicated. What causes nephrogenic diabetes insipidus? Nephrogenic diabetes insipidus is caused by kidney unresponsiveness to ADH. Look for medications as a cause, especially lithium and demeclocycline. What diagnostic test can reveal whether diabetes insipidus is central or nephrogenic? How are these conditions treated? Give the patient a dose of ADH and measure urine osmolarity. If central diabetes insipidus is the cause, urine osmolarity increases with ADH challenge. In nephrogenic diabetes insipidus, the urine remains inappropriately dilute after the patient is given ADH. Treatment for central diabetes insipidus is ADH replacement, which is given orally or as a nasal spray. Treatment for nephrogenic diabetes insipidus involves stopping any offending drug and giving a thiazide diuretic, as ADH does not help. Although giving a diuretic to a patient with diabetes insipidus may seem counterintuitive, it has a paradoxical effect of decreasing urine output. Define the syndrome of inappropriate antidiuretic hormone secretion, or SIADH. How is it diagnosed? The name says it all. ADH is released inappropriately. SIADH is a consideration in patients with hyponatremia and normal volume status. In SIADH, serum osmolarity is low, but urine osmolarity is high. There's inappropriate urine concentration. Look for the values of all electrolytes in lab tests to be low. The classic example is a low uric acid level. Because of dilution of the serum with free water secondary to inappropriate ADH. What causes SIADH? Central nervous system causes include stroke, hemorrhage, infection, and trauma, medications, including narcotics, oxytocin given to pregnant patients, chlorpropamide, and anti-epileptic agents. Trauma may cause SIADH, as pain is a powerful stimulus for ADH. Watch for the post-operative patient who is receiving fluids, and often narcotics, and also has pain. And finally, lung problems can cause SIADH. And these can range from a simple pneumonia to an ADH secreting small cell cancer of the lung. How is SIADH treated? Treat with water restriction. Stop intravenous fluids and restrict oral fluid intake. For the purposes of the step two exam, do not give hypertonic saline unless the patient is actively having seizures. You may cause brainstem damage or central pontine myelinolysis from too rapid correction of the sodium level. Demeclocycline is sometimes used to treat SIADH if water restriction fails because it induces nephrogenic diabetes insipidus, which allows the patient to eliminate free water. That's the end of part three of the endocrinology chapter. Please join us for our other videos uh, from USMLE Step 2 Secrets.